So you've been talking about this already, right? Um, the adult, like what the adult wants versus what the child wants. Um, and so how do we balance our parental goals? Like we have these high goals for our child, as you had described, like, oh, I want them to, to achieve uh, versus the, their, obviously their own interests and their, their own choices. So how do you like, is there a balance? Is it just their choices? Is it just our, like, it, it feels like you wouldn't just have one or the other. Like, what is, what is the right balance in this case? I would say that our adult wants and our adult goals should be focused on ourselves and not on our children. Like, if we have a goal for our parenting, it should be, I'm striving to be more patient. I'm striving to not yell at my kids. I'm striving to... Um, to have more empathy, all of those things. Because I feel like when we place our wants and our goals onto another person, that's very disrespectful. That's very oppressive in my mind, even though we are told that that is the responsibility of a parent. But um, I don't believe that we should have that type of control and authority over another person. Just like just like I wouldn't want to come into my relationship with my partner and say, I have these goals for you. The, these are the things that I think you should achieve in a year. And I wouldn't be a good wife if I didn't, you know, keep you on track with that. I think that's just very dehumanizing and very disrespectful, right? Like my, our partners are their own people. Our children are their own people. And so how can we come alongside them as um, just to support them th to honor that their individuality, to know that I might have my own goals and my own personality, my own ambitions and dreams. I get to pursue those for myself. And you are your own person with your own goals, personalities, and dreams. And how can I support you in, in living the life that you want? Not the life that I want for you, the life that you, that my child wants may be completely different from mine. And so in that way, I don't know if there is a balance, at least in my mind. I think, I think that our focus really needs to be on our own self-control, our own, um, like pursuing the things in our lives that we want for ourselves and supporting and empowering our kids to be fully themselves instead of needing to please mom and dad, needing to um, live out our dreams, meet our goals. Um, I really have been trying to resist that in my journey. It, that's a good point because often we have our own dreams and ambitions and then we we put them into our, our child, like, oh, we weren't able to achieve like the top level at whatever, and then you're going to achieve it. Uh, and then my goal is going to become your goal. And uh, without ever asking them, well, is that really the goal that you wanted? And then later they, they come to like, let's say they even do it or and they succeed, they, they could still have a lot of like regret and resentment. And if anything, it feels like the balance is too much on the parenting side like the parent goals right now, and it's too little on the, uh, on the, like, what does the child actually want? And like, we ask them to make good decisions, but if we don't give them those opportunities to make good decisions, they, they, they don't have the experience. They have to sometimes learn by making mistakes, <laughs> by not getting things right all the time. So I love that. I love that. That's very powerful. Um, but Iris, like if we can like dive a little bit more into this, um, in your book, you, you specifically talk about like, we need to rewire, we need to rethink about what we mean by parenting. Can you go over like, what are some of those, those things that like we, other assumptions that we build in that, you know, maybe it's from our own upbringing that sometimes we need to rethink uh, if we want to consider uh, like, uh, like on untigering to be something that we want to use as a parenting strategy at home. Mm. I, yeah, I mentioned one of those right now where I think we need to rethink what our parenting role is because I think we're like mainstream parenting the way that we've grown up. We assume that our parental role is to control our children, to make sure that they turn out well, to, for them to have a better life, whatever that looks like than we do. Um, and so I think part of it is to 
not see our parental role from sort of this authoritarian hierarchical framework, but how to reframe that so that it really is about partnership and about communication, about love and trust that's much more relational, where we share power with our children instead of use power over them. So I think that for me has been a huge, you know, paradigm shift um, where we see children as human beings and honor them instead of dehumanizing them. That's that's another thing that I say where we need to um, rethink our beliefs about children, because I think we do have a lot of dehumanizing beliefs about children where they like it's totally acceptable in culture to control them, to silence them, to ignore them, to oppress them, to control them. Mm -hmm. All these things that we would never do to other populations that we feel is right and good to do to children. So that's something that really needs to be questioned and challenged. How can we begin to see children um, as whole people? And once we begin to see that, Um, I think that causes us to really question, well, why do I think that I have the right to force them into this thing when I would never force my friend to do that? Why do I feel like I can say this to my child when I would never say that to my partner, right? So I think there's a lot of adultism that we need to question. Um, I think another thing is just to rethink misbehavior And this was a big thing for me because um, when we're always focused on how our child is behaving and wanting them to behave in ways that are appropriate, that make us feel good, that like make us feel like we're doing a good job as a parent, we're missing out on what's happening underneath the surface, you know, and how um, all behavior is communication, all behavior are, they're all attempts to get needs met. And so rather than Um, being very punitive, having a lot of rules to try to control behavior. Um, It's more about understanding what are the, you know, emotional, physical, all those needs underneath um, that are driving that so that we can have a lot more compassion with, uh, for our children and help them to meet those needs in more appropriate ways. I, I love that. I remember hearing like at the Parenting Decolonized Conference, um, someone said like, I think it was in the chat, somebody said like, our child is not having challenging behaviors. Like their, beha- like, their, there are behaviors that are challenging me as an adult. There are communications that are challenging my level of patience, my ability to, to cope with those types of things as an adult. And uh, as my own experience like um and and this it it runs short all the time and it was this kind of realization that you know what i cannot um i cannot go and control his behavior and and things are going to happen but if i can spend a little bit more time to understand oh he's saying this and he's doing these things but why is he doing that oh because he's missing this it's like it, it just forces us to be way more thoughtful uh, about the parenting and i think we would do the same for any friend, we would do the same for an employer, we would do the same for like people even on the street that we see. Um, so it, it, I think it makes so much sense to, to rethink this behavior as a type of communication, just like you, you would interpret uh, another adult, like they're trying to explain things to you, they, they haven't built the vocabulary, they, they don't have all the same facilities to explain what's going on. So we have to step up that much more with with kids and that's not easy for a lot of people (laughs) yeah i love it yeah oftentimes we're just reacting to their behavior and we are exhibiting the types of behaviors that we're not accepting of in them you know whether they're yelling or you know throwing a tantrum or whatever it is we're doing the same thing to them and we feel justified in doing it so i do think a lot of it is um stretching our own ability to understand and to tolerate that, give them the space. Which to, is huge. Yeah, to do that by having more that. understanding. Mm-hmm. 